What is crack a lackin' Hardwood Knox watchers? I am Damp Valley coming at you with another YouTube exclusive. If you're watching this, it would mean the world to me if you hit that subscribe button, like, and comment as well so that the algorithm will, will love us back. Uh, but it would really mean a bunch if you could just hit that subscribe button as we continue to try and reach our ambitious goals on this growing, fast growing, but still would like to continue growing it, YouTube channel. We cover the entire NBA here. We try and put out a ton of thorough content that doesn't take itself too seriously as much as possible. Again, and finally, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Going to go through this article that was written uh, ranking the best young cores in the NBA after free agency. I have not seen it yet. Going to go through it, give my quick reactions to it. It was written by co-host of the podcast, Grant Hughes. He's fantastic. That's why we're going through his pieces here. Without further ado, let's let's get into this, though. He did the top 10, but there are some honorable mentions, so let's get to, to those. Um, the first honorable mention is the Denver Nuggets. Wow, it's kind of wild to think how young the De Denver Nuggets core still is. Jokic really isn't that old. Uh, Murray is at 25. Porter is at 24. Bones Highland, of course, one of the best young players at 22. Uh, even Zeke Nagy is really good. That's a... Man, the, the Nuggets. The Warriors, too. Look, Jordan Poole, Jonathan Kaminga, Moses Moody, Wiseman... Uh, it's actually a little bit puzzling. Uh, they're not maybe on this list, I guess, because we don't know what Wiseman's going to be like after injury, and we need to see Moody and Kaminga in bigger roles, but they're certainly one of the most intriguing young cores in the league. The Heat, Bam Adebayo, still only 25. That's that's wild. Tyler Hero, 23. That's fine. Yurt Seven's actually pretty good. I still don't really have a good gauge of Akpala. The Knicks, as an honorable mention, this is going to make some people mad, including me. RJ Barrett, Mitch Robinson, Emmanuel Quickly, Obi Toppin, not good enough. Quentin Grimes, first team, all summer league. Quentin Grimes, not enough to get you here. Cam Reddish, Isaiah Hartenstein, only 25, just to reinforce how good that signing was. Sims showed, showed promise. We got to see who makes this list. I would have them on here. I do think the Knicks have hurt themselves by signing so many vets to play in front of these guys this past season. Uh, and now people don't necessarily understand. I'm not even saying Grant's one of them, but around the league, even look at the Jazz trade discussions for Donovan Mitchell. They don't understand how good these guys probably actually are since the Knicks, again, sort of blocked playing time for them. 10 with the Orlando Magic. I'm so high on Paolo Bancaro. This feels low. Wendell Carter Jr., Franz Wagner, I get it. Jalen Suggs, not the core. I disagree with that very hard. I think he's going to be a fantastic player that makes all-star appearances. Cole Anthony, good microwave scorer. Mo Bamba showed a lot of improvement last season. Fultz has become, he's a good defender, has a little bit of a mid-range game, some directionality to his drives and playmaking as well. We don't know what Jonathan Isaac is anymore. Chumo Kiki still needs a jump shot. RJ Hampton's been disappointing. I was a really big fan of his. Um, this is the potential to skyrocket, not just because of Bank Caro and, and Wagner and Carter, but I think Jalen Sugg is going to be really good. And then you have higher-end wild cards with Isaac speci specifically, and then even Fultz a little bit. Shocking to see them at 10. The Houston Rockets at 9. Jalen Green, Alperin Shangun, Jabari Smith Jr. I agree with the core. Terry Eason, Ty Ty Washington, Kevin Porter Jr., Josh Christopher, Kenya Martin Jr., Usman Gruba. Yeah, the sheer volume of talent here, I would put them in front of the Magic, maybe by a hair. Uh, Terry Eason looked good in summer league. Uh, Ty Ty Washington, smaller, but plays bigger than he is. I think if Houston gives him some run, he could wind up being better than Kevin Porter Jr. to run their offense right off the bat. Uh, but Jalen Green and Jabari Smith Jr., to have those two certified cornerstones right there, that's absolutely huge. And I think a lot of people would put Shane Goon into that as well. I, I see. And by the way, KJ Martin is, KJ Martin Jr. Me, is ridiculously good, if anyone has not watched him play yet. Eight, the Pistons. Cade, Jaden, Ivy, Jalen Duran. That makes sense. Sadiq Bey, Killian Hayes, Hamadou Diallo, Marvin Bagley III, Isaiah Stewart. I'd probably have this behind the Rockets until we see what Jay Nivey is going to be. I'm in love with Jalen Duran. Uh, and Kate Cunningham, I think, is going to be one of the five best players in the NBA very, very soon. Um, Sadiq Bey kind of explores off the dribble game a little bit more last year, and, and some of those shots started falling. Killian Hayes had a nice close to the end of the year, too, with his rim pressure. I don't know what opportunity he's going to get post Jay Nivey coming. And again, what does Jay Nivey look like? I thought Marvin Bagley III played really well there to close the year, on offense anyway. I didn't think they needed to give him that contract, and then you're in this weird position with the front court. You have him, B. Stu, Kelly Olenek, Jalen Duran. Um, how much, like, is there, are you going to be able to balance those guys? I don't want to see too much Marvin Bagley three at the four. I think right now, Cade is a sure thing, and maybe he's higher end enough to rise up the Pistons. I would have put them behind the Rockets, I think, and maybe even the Magic at this point, just because I'm so high on Cade. A lot of question marks about everybody else. Toronto Raptors at seven. Scotty Barnes, OG still only 25. Gary Trent Jr. only 24. 
Precious Achua was really good last year. Super switchable on defense. Had a little bit of a uh, a three-point touch to him. Delano Banning, Christian Coloco. The Raptors are very high on him. We'll see if he can carve out minutes at the five immediately. I don't know where to put these guys. Just because OG Ananobi is so close to being over 25, had a down year last year, I would expect him to be better. I think the top end of this with Scotty Barnes, Ananobi, and Gary Trent Jr., that might be the um, highest-end trio that we've gone through so far. But like Malachi Flynn couldn't really see the court last year. Delano Banton fell off after a nice little start. We don't know what to expect from Christian Coloco. Would I have them behind the Pistons? No. I do wonder if the Rockets need to belong in front of them, though. A lot of this really just depends on, I thought Scotty Barnes was Rookie of the Year. I think he has top 10 player potential, um, but that probably depends largely on your impressions of him immediately. Number six, the Oklahoma City Thunder. I fave this without even looking at it. Shea, only 24, one of the best bright young players in the league. Lou Dort, still only 23. So think about that when you look at his five-year deal, which is only guaranteed for four years. Josh Giddy, 20. Chad Holmgren's only 20. Ushman Jang's only 19. Jalen Williams, number one, is only 21. The other Jalen Williams is only 20. I still like Darius Baisley. I don't know what he's going to become on offense, but he can handle some really tough assignments across the board at all these different positions on defense. Trey Mann, solid. Aaron Wiggins brought some nice rim pressure last year. Alexei Pokashevsky should be part of the core. I'm gonna. He started to put things together at points last year. I like Jeremiah Robinson Earl. Um, sort of a front court Swiss, Swiss Army knife, excuse me, on defense, uh, and can play even play some small ball five. I think they they belong in front of everyone here, and that's look. I like Holmgren. I'm I'm okay on Giddy. I love Lou Dort. I think Usman Jiang is gonna be really good. Uh, and Alexei Pokashevsky is is underrated. So you combine that with a certified entrenched star in Shea. Yeah, they, they, they belong here so far. The Atlanta Hawks. Trey, Collins, Hunter, Onyeka, Kongwu, Jalen Johnson, who I still think is going to be really good. I hope the, the Hawks can give him more playing time this year. Sharif Cooper, uh, really tore it up in the, uh, the G League last year, I believe. Was a little bit disappointing in Summer League this season. Uh, A.J. Griffin, who they just drafted, he should provide some nice shooting. You have Trey Young here and even John Collins at 25, so that's going to boost this up. I would have the Thunder maybe in front of them. I, Trey's already, like, all NBA material, but I, I, you know what? I think Shea is there, too. So I'm going to go. I think the Thunder should be above the Hawks here, but I get why Trey carries the Hawks so high. The Celtics at four. Um, Jason Tatum, still only 19 years old. I hope people get that joke. Robert Williams is only 25. Jalen Brown aged out of this. Grant Williams, 24. Pritchard, Sam Hauser. You know, Jason Tatum is doing a lot of the heavy lifting here, kind of like a Luka Doncic with the Mavericks situation. Do you value that tippy top end star power or the depth of the youth? I think um, Time Lord and Grant Williams, who was spectacular last year, sort of this just 3 and D big, which you really don't see too much of. Um, I think there's enough here to say, yeah, the Celtics belong in front of everybody if Tatum's going to be the driving force. I like them better than Atlanta. I might consider putting OKC just ahead of them. We're not ranking performance for next season, just these these long-term cores of, of 25 and, and younger players. The Cavs at three, yeah, they're the best core we've seen so far. Evan Mobley uh, is already a defensive player of the year candidate. I think he has a lot more to offer on offense as well, and I hope they give him the ball more, not just to sort of run fast breaks, but operate from face-ups, more stuff in the post. I think he's another one. Between him, Scotty Barnes, and Cade Cunningham, that 20... Uh, 21 draft class might have three top 10 players in the NBA at one point at once. Jared Allen does a lot more on offense than people think. It's not just screen setting and then rim running. Like there's some nice touch, complicated touch turnarounds, hook shots to his game. And then Darius Garland, uh, he all-star player this past year, absolutely deserved it. And he can be the primary engine of your offense at the, the guard spot. His passing's fantastic. Love is in between game can play off the ball a little bit. Larry Markin is still only 25. Um, Akbaji, I'm wondering if he's going to be able to turn into like sort of a 3 and D player. We need to see if he gets playing time. Isaac Okoro shot the three ball better than you think last year and can be really disruptive away from the ball defensively. He probably needs more on-ball reps offensively, though, to maximize him. And I just don't know if the Cavs have that. But just the, the top three here. There's a chance that this becomes the best trio in the NBA one day. All three of these players are 24 and under right now. Really think about that if they stay healthy. Two, the New Orleans Pelicans. Too low. Too low. They should be one. Zion is 22. Ingram's still only 25. Herb Jones, 24. Trey Murphy, the third, 22. Dyson Daniels, only 19. Love him. That's going to be someone who I think is sort of this jack-of-all-trades player, maybe master of none. If he develops a consistent three-point shot, can get his three-pointer off a little bit quicker from those set spots, or just knock down threes consistently, I'm not saying these complicated off-the-dribble looks, I think he's going to be, like, mega good. I just, I don't even 
know how to describe it. Um, EJ Liddell, don't know what to expect from him after his ACL injury. Jose Alvarado uh, probably pickpocketed someone while we were talking about this. I still don't know what to expect from Jackson Hayes. I didn't love the whole him at power forward look last year, but he has the length um, to do a lot of disruption on defense, and I think he was smarter the way he moved away from the ball both on defense and offense last year. Kyra Lewis Jr., we don't know enough about him. Going to come back from the torn ACL. Dude's a blur, though, and so I wouldn't count him out to become a really productive NBA player. Let's hope Najee Marshall can maybe bounce back after disappearing last year. But by virtue of Zion and Brandon Ingram, how is this team not number one? Who's number one? Memphis. All right, I get it. Jaws only 23. Jaron Jackson Jr. only 23. Bain, 24. I'm a lot higher on Zaire Williams after how he closed the year last season, and he got some important playoff minutes for them. I just... I'm like kind of not intrigued by the other young talent in this equation. Xavier Tillman, uh, really solid and physical. Killian Tilly, Santi Aldama didn't get a lot of run last year. Jake LaRavia, that, that's going to be someone who will probably get immediate playing time given that they got rid of Kyle Anderson and especially with Triple J injured to start the year. David Roddy, yeah, sure. Kennedy Chandler, too much just Chandler, Roddy, LaRavia, and then even to a lesser extent like Aldama. Um, not a, there's too much unproven talent. I would have the Pelicans in front of them. I would have the Cavs in front of them. I, I love Ja, and I, I look, I love the top four, uh, but I think that they probably belong in like that three or four spot and should be behind both Cleveland and New Orleans. What did you think of these rankings? Let me know in the comments. Please, pretty please remember to subscribe to this channel and like this video. And if you have any other content ideas you'd like to see me tackle, let me know in the comments. Until next time, and as always, I leave you the shout out to the one, the only, the legendary, the best player who really should have been ranked number one in this young core exercise, Frank Nielakina.